Hey, good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here at Beth Jacob for our Modern Minds on Jewish Matter series, which is going to be taking place tonight and the next four other speakers over the course of five weeks, so pretty much consecutive, but with one break. And you'll see the postcards that are sprinkled around the shul that gives you the full schedule of the different speakers that we have over the course of the next several weeks. I want to uh, begin by thanking all of you for joining us. Number two, thanking our series sponsors, uh, Albert and Heidi Proa, for their generosity and vision in sponsoring our Modern Mind series. Thank you so much. And great to see you both tonight as well. Um, I do want to recognize as well uh, Dr. Bob Wexler and the AJU for being involved in bringing in Rabbi Dr. Lau, together with his assistant, Dabi Gail, um, and for helping organize tonight's event. Rav Soloveitchik, on a number of occasions, in writing and speeches, spoke about the fact that there are two Britot, that every single Jew has to be aware that there are two dimensions or two covenants that we have to subscribe to. The first one, Rav Soloveitchik called the Brit Sinai, that's described in last week and this week's Parsha, which is the fact that we're committed to all the different mitzvot that were given to the Jewish people at Sinai. And the other Brit is what Rav Soloveitchik called the Brit Avot, which is the covenant that Hashem made actually prior to Sinai, before the mitzvot were given, that he made with Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah, our patriarchs and matriarchs. And Rav Soloveitchik developed the idea that I'll just say in, in one and a half lines, which is that we're, we're both a, a religion and a people. It's as Rus said, right? As Ruth said to Naomi, she said, Amech ami velokayach elokai. That your nation is my nation and your God is my God. And so you have the Brit Sinai, which is elokayach elokai, which are the mitzvot that we all observe and we care deeply about the Torah and the mitzvot and observing the halachic lifestyle as best as we can. But at the same time, we recognize that we're part of a people. And we have a responsibility to Am Yisrael and to Medina Yisrael. And we care, we share in the fate and destiny of the Jewish people. And we have a responsibility to the Jewish people and to every single Jew, aside but complementing together with our commitment to halakha and Torah. And I was thinking that this is a, this idea of Rav Soloveitchik, the Brit Sinai Brit Avot, is a great way to introduce Rabbi Dr. Benny Lau, our guest speaker this evening, who's here all the way from Eretz Yisrael, because Rabbi Lau um, is one of the most forward-thinking Progressive rabbis in Israel. Um, he's the rabbi of the Rabban Shul in Yerushalayim that some of you have visited over the course of the years. He worked for a number of years at the Israel Democracy Institute. Uh, right now, I'll tell you about it in a moment. He's running this incredible in pro uh, project in, in Israel called Tesha Stein, Tesha 929, that I'll get back to you, and some of you hopefully are aware of it. And Rabbi Lau and I were just uh, speaking about it. He was bringing me up to date about this amazing project that's taking Israel by storm. But Rabbi Lau, with everything that he does, making an impact in amazing ways in Israel because of his commitment to Brit Sinai and Brit Avot. It's a commitment to Torah, Halakha, but it's with an openness and inclusiveness, reaching out to all different parts of society, caring about social justice, um, ethical kashrut, improving access for the disabled, religious and ethical education for idea of soldiers, advanced Torah learning for women, and in a multiplicity of ways. In Medina Yisrael, inspiring all the Jewish people in Israel and beyond, here all of us, um, here in Beverly Hills as well. Let me mention, so it's, it's a real honor to, to host you, Rabbi Dakila. Thank you so much for being in our community. As you know, our community, we're proud at Beth Jacob for being a strong religious Zionist pro-Israel community, and we're, we're deeply interested in what you have to tell us today about the religious and secular divide and trends in Israel. But I'll tell you about this 929 project, Tesha Shtayim Tesha, which is, that's the amount of chapters in Tanakh. And around a year ago, actually I reminded Rabbi Lau when he was here in Beth Jacob a few years ago, he spoke about, you might remember, 
about his vision of trying to get everyone involved in the study of Tanakh. Um, and what it means for us today in 2016. And so the project of 929, it's, he has thousands of individuals in Israel studying a Perak of Tanakh a day. They're up to Malach Amalev Perak Chet. There are commentators on the website right now, it's just a Hebrew website, but we'll see, we'll hopefully, uh, we'll get it so that uh, we'll also have access for those English speakers as well. But on the website, you have, um, you have people writing essays on each chapter of Tanakh, and each day it has the different essays, and the essays are from rabbis, from journalists, rabbis, orthodox rabbis, conservative rabbis, reform rabbis, journalists, um, musicians, artists are writing these different essays on a parak of Tanakh. There's a radio show that reaches up to a million, maybe a million people, Israelis, that's uh, from uh, uh, Karen Orbach, and she does an hour a week it was her choice to talk about this project of bringing Tanakh. Thousands of people, they do a chug. They have chugim all around, all around Israel. Um, a lot of it is in Tel Aviv and people who are not uh, Shomer Torah Mitzvot, but they're inspired by the messages of Tanakh, which is all a credit to the founder of that vision, which is Rabbi Dr. Benny Lau. So, without further ado, pleasure to introduce Rabbi Dr. Benny Lau. just came from Israel today and uh, thinking about the words that Rabbi Yehuda Levi 900 years ago used to say Libi Mizrach Vani Besof HaMa'arav Now when he wrote these words he was in Spain not in LA I'm in the south of Ma'arav. I'm in the end of the West. What did he know about the end of the West in the 11th century? So thanks God, I believe that we all can say together, Libi Mizrach. I know that. I know a lot about Ben Jacob, about the history and the present time of a congregation that the heart, and I think that more than that, the deep relations with the Israeli society, with everything that happened in Israel, connect to you. To you, with your families, friends, yourself. And it's really an honor for me to stand here and share with you thoughts about the needs the needs of doing in Israel today. We know that when enemies around us try to, to do something for about to the Israeli society, immediately, immediately, all tribes in Israel strongly stand together and it's happened too often and we know that it uh, can be from years to years or from months to month that something happened and then we collect strongly ourselves all kinds, all parties, all tribes and we stand and say Am Echad Ba'aretz. One nation. But when you think about the situation that we, the Israeli society, stand strongly together just in a negative situation, actually it's a tragedy. When you think about that, that in a regular days, when everything around is, uh, I shouldn't say it's uh, quiet, but regular. Regular means that you allow yourself to 
keep your routine, your routine in the day-to-day -day life. Then you open your eyes, read the journalists, read the newspaper, the media, the TV, and see immediately the first pages, the arguments between tribes, between Dati and Chiloni, between Yamin and Small, all the machlokot, all the arguments immediately jump up, raised to our face, and they are so aggressive. And many times you hear the voices and you said it can't be. We are really Am Echad, one nation in the earth. Please let me share with you a short story about my father, Alava Shalom. My father passed away a year ago. And uh, always when I, when I went around the world, so he was with me, because he, they met, uh, you know, the, the, the phrase said, Vayu einecha ro'ot. Your eyes should see your model. When my father came to Israel first time, it was 45. In June 45, immediately after the war, he, the end of the war, he found himself in Buchenwald. And after that, via Paris, via France, they came to, to Israel in a boat. The story is on the boat, the way to Israel, June 45. A messenger from Israel, a rabbi from one of the kibbutzim, tried to collect people to have minyan. Tried to think, hundreds of people came to Israel, olim chadashim, from the Holocaust, and he tried to collect people to have minyan. Okay. So he found people, the Dati people, and suddenly he saw another group that said, we refuse to pray with this group. <laughs> now, you understand that? Month ago, month ago in Buchenwald, the Germans didn't care about what your background is, if you are like that or that or that. Now on the boat to Israel, you refuse to pray together what's happened to you. Months later, it's not a joke, actually, it's a place to cry. Month later, he was with a group in a small place near Kfar Saba. You know the town Kfar Saba, just nearby Tel Aviv. It was a place of a party called Poalei Agudat Israel. Poalei Agudat Israel was the part of, of the Haredi, of Agudat Israel. And Poalei Agudat Israel was close to the, there wasn't Zioni because it was Agudat Israel, but close to the Zionist movement. Poalei Agudat Israel, and my father was part of that. About, uh, you know, I don't know if it's hundreds, young people, uh, be, you know, for, for a few months they spend there in Nirkfar Saba. Shabbat morning, it was the second or the third Shabbat in Israel. Summer, it was July already. Summer, they went out to have air. It was a very hot day, without air conditions, those days, 45. Suddenly, it was noontime, Shabbat. A bus passed over and stopped. And young Hevre from one of the kibbutzim 
jump out and start fights against this group of the of the Dati. The they call them Adukim, the name of the religious, Adukim. Who needs you here in Israel? You the religious. Who needs you here? 45 July. And they start fighting against them. They call them in a very, very ugly words about the people who came from the Holocaust. I will not uh, use the, the words. It was something that we don't want you here. And these two stories that my father shared with us, you know, he didn't tell us when years ago. He did, Abba didn't tell us stories about the Holocaust. Not at all. But these two stories he shared with us. He said, what's happened to us? To the Israelis, to the Jewish people. How we allow ourselves to do such things? Can't we understand that the only way of living together it's by giving place each other. Notnim reshut You remember in the tefillah how many times we do that. We use the words about the prey of the angels. Tefillat hamalachim. Nakdishach v'naritzach. We said to Hashem. We will put you in a situation of holiness. <coughs> like who? Keshem shemakdishim oto bishmei marom. We will do exactly what the angels do in heaven. How? Then, if you read carefully what we said in the tefillah, suddenly, the kedusha. We said, Two different psukim. The first one we said from the prophet Yeshayahu, Sai. We said Kadosh, 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 Hashem Tzvakot. Melo kol haaretz kvodo. And then we follow the words from the other prophet, Yechezkel. And we say, Baruch kvod Hashem. Now, because we sing that, and because we don't actually understand what we sing, so we don't, we don't care. The truth is that if you learn carefully these two prophets, it's an argument between prophets. The question that the prophet puts on our life is, where are we supposed to find Hashem? Bashamayim or Ba'aretz? And the Nevi'im, the prophets, argue about that. Ishayam said, Melo kol ha'aretz kvodo. Ishayam, I should say, was strongly against politicians. He didn't believe that man, a human being, can lead the people. The only one who can be the leader in the world is Hashem, what we call Malchut Shamayim. The kingdom of Hashem is the only way to lead the people. This is Ishayahu. His master was Shmuel, Hanavi, the first one. Yechezkel was the opposite. Yechezkel believed that we need to have a state with a politician. And where we will find Hashem? Baruch mimekomo. Mimekomo we find Barachamav. If you will go to our project 9 to 9, you need to, be, to know a bit Hebrew. Actually, it's a good way to practice Hebrew because every day you can listen to the chapter of the day. 
in the audio. If you are in traffic, <laughs> so you have a few minutes, you can listen to a beautiful voice of a journalist from Galeit Sahan that read the chapter of the day. Beautiful voice. And then you can have a short lesson. Include my lesson, daily shi'u, about 12 minutes a day. Then you practice your Hebrew. If I will listen to the English, maybe I will make my English better. But the chapter of this day, today, means Thursday. In Israel it's Thursday already. In 12 o'clock at night it's changed. So the chapter of Thursday is Sefer Melachim, Kings, chapter 8. If you will open Sefer Melachim, chapter 8, you will see beautiful prayer that Solomon the king said when he aimed to build the temple. And if you will read carefully the words of Shlomo HaMelech, you will be shocked. After 20 years of project of building, seven years the temple, 13 years his own castle, after 20 years he shared the message with the old people who paid thousands taxes. He said to them, I have something to tell you. This beautiful building, Hashem will not be here. So why we do that? He said like that in this chapter. Who can think that Hashem he will be at, in this building? So what all about? It's a place to pray and he will listen from Shemaim to our praying. Look carefully to this chapter. I just gave you hints. Just read carefully the chapter of this day. You will see something beautiful. Fourteen times you will count the word Shemaim in this chapter. Fourteen means double seven. The seven is the complete number in the Bible. If you will read carefully, you will see fourteen times also that Hashem listening. Lishmoa. And if you will add together Lishmoa Hashemayim, you will find seven times. I mean, this is the key words in this chapter. Hashem will listen, but not from this building, from Shemaim. This is mamash, mamash, the opinion of Yechezkel, the prophet. Now, why I said that? First of all, to share with you the 9 to 9 project, but seriously, what we are talking about when we said Kedusha, we said to Hashem, we want to talk with you like who? Like the angels. And like how? And we want to do that exactly with both voices. We want to collect the voice of Yeshaya and we want to collect the voice of Yechezkel. And, yes, we can take two voices together and listen to them. How? You remember in the tefillah? Notnim reshut ze laze lehakdish liyotzra benachat ruach. Every day, every morning, we say that. Mean what? We take the psukim from the argument from Yeshayahu and Yechazkel. Say, what is the key? What is the secret? How they, how they do that? The answer is notnim reshut ze laze. They accept. They understand. The angels understand that their own voice it's not the whole. It's part. Notnim reshut mean I know that your voice is different but it's important that everyone will listen to your voice include mine. 
נותנים רשות זה לזה להקדיש ליוצרם בנחת רוח, רילקס, בשפה ברורה, בנעימה, קיינדלי. And then, קדושה כולם כאחד עונים ואומרים. Then we can all together said we have the same direction, we have the same aim, the same vision. We all want to make the world much better. And we're different. And we have different explanation. And we are a huge machloket between us about how to do that. But we all want to do the, the better world to everyone. This is our tefillah, the daily tefillah, include Shabbat, include Chag, all days, all year, all life. This is our words. But what's happened to our acts? If we said such things every day, all year, why we don't do that? Notnim reshut zelase. להקדיש לי יוצרם. Tragedy in Israel yesterday. About 2,000 years we had a place to cry. Kotel Maravi. Since yesterday we have two Kotel Maravi. If you didn't hear about that, good for you. The solution about the argument between tribes in Israel, how to pray near the Kotel, made the decision, the government made the decision to cut the Kotel. We have the old Kotel for the Orthodox, let's say the ultra-Orthodox, and we have another kotel that will be a huge project to open to say to the alternative prayer. Now, the truth is that everyone wants to pray in his own way. And it's fair. But can't we find a way to keep the wall that all kinds will find a way, different time. You know, I, I shall share with you openly, all business starts with needs of a group. Never mind if it's reform or alternative liberal groups, never mind. Ask to come once a month in Rosh Chodesh, a woman, to pray with talit and tefillin, reading the Torah with their own shita. And the leaders of this area said, no way. This is Bet Knesset. We'll follow the chukim, the rules of the Orthodox people. What? Let's share it. What's the price that we, the Orthodox people, will pay if once a month we will say for two hours, it's yours. It's yours. But we have just one cotton. When you fight and say no way, the solution will be a war between us not for us. When we are talking about something that needs to connect you, you need to minimize yourself to give a macomb, a place, to someone who is different than you. Without minimize yourself, no one will find place. And this is our story in Israel. It's a story between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, if you want, like that. I will share with you my feelings about my project, 9 to 9. I will explain why I do that. The whole project started about five or 
four years ago, five years ago. I went to a high school in Israel, a regular high school, not religious. What you call here, public, connect all, all kids. Year 11, mean 17 years old. About 200 youth, boys, girls together. I came inside the room and I brought with me small book, Tanakh. And when I started, I said to the kids, I found this book in the entrance. If someone lost it, please come after the lecture and take it. And the reaction was laughing. And one sweet girl who sit in the front said to me four words. Actually, it's five because she used the same one twice. I will say it in Hebrew and then I mean, I, I believe that you will, you, you will get it. She said she, she, she was sweet and she said it in a positive way. She said to me, Rabbi, Rabbi, this is twice. <laughs> Rabbi, Rabbi, the lo shelanu. <laughs> now, to explain, Rabbi, Rabbi, this is not ours. The, the means the book. It's not ours. Now, you laughed, I cried. Believe me, I cried. I looked at this sweet Israeli girl, 17 years old, who said, said to me nicely, you know, when Israeli said to an Israeli rabbi, Rabbi, mean she never spoke with rabbi before. Because no one said to Rabbi in Israel, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. Rabbi is a, is a slogan, it's not a real. But never mind. What did she think when she said, the lo shelano? This book, the lo shelano? This book, why she said that, you know? Because in her mind, if you see Bible, so it's something religious in Bet Knesset. And she never went to Bet Knesset before, and she don't want to go to Bet Knesset in her life. So what she supposed to do with this book? It's not ours. Ours means the collective around her. Now I will tell you seriously, she's not alone. This is a real tragedy that happened in Israel. We are Israelis, speaking Hebrew, kaha kaha. <laughs> but we can't read the Tanakh because it's not ours. The Tanakh becomes something unique to the religious people. To the Orthodox people. That was the moment that I understand that the Shlichut is to bring the Tanakh back. But this girl and her friends need to believe me that I have respect to her own style of life, to her tradition to her culture, to her secular, secularism. That when I ask her to read chapter a day, I don't mean that next week she will come to me to do Shabbat. This is a fair game, mean open game. That not nim reshut zela zeh. That I understand deeply that her parents decided to live in a different way. But we share together the same heritage. The Tanakh can make us stronger together. 
We will read together, learn together, argue together. But something will make us stronger with reading our, not just stories, values, the voices of, of prophets all over. It's yours, it's ours, it's not mine. So we started last year in Hanukkah, last year. We started in the president house. Rivlin, the president, host us always. Every few weeks, we have Chuk in his home, Bet Anasi, and learn together the chapter of the day. We have about 150 groups around the country. But the key is that in the end we want to hear young girl in a regular school said, Rabbi, Rabbi, the Shedi, it's mine. And I will, want, I will read it and I will argue with you about that. And I will be happy. So we are working hard to open gates. Open gates is a serious game. To understand that met seriously, you can share something that you feel close to you, share it with others and say, take it. You need to train yourself to leave it. That other people will read and will explain differently than you. It's a serious game. Thanks God we are now close to end 300 chapters. Try to think every day, it's like a daily magazine. Every day in our site you can see about 20 different voices from the whole spectrum of Israeli society. All spectrum. And every day we continue with different 20 voices. So we have hundreds of people who write every, every time. Five days a week. It's a very, very popular site, groups. And the idea in the end is not just reading Tanakh. In the end, we are trying to do something to bridge the gap between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. To understand that it's not a secular state and a religious state, two states to two nations. We are talking about one nation with one book. And different voices. This is okay. When we are talking about dangerous situations in Israel, we know that with enemies around us, we know how to, do, to work. It's hard. It's not easy. We are go, we should say, too many Levayot we had in this last year. But we know how to stand after that. We know that. All kinds of society. We know how to continue with enemies around us. But we must learn about the enemy inside home. This is much more different, difficult. This is the real challenge to the Israeli society. And it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. If we will not open eyes to this enemy, we are in a very, very difficult situation. And this is the, the, the reason why we try to wake up and to fight against this enemy in a positive way. I will end here. We'll collect your question if you want. And thank you very much. Until the question will come, I will give you a short story. Who heard about the journalist in Israel named 
קרן נויבך. You heard about קרן נויבך? קרן נויבך is a journalist in, uh, in the radio, have a daily program about two hours a day, daily, and her program called סדר היום. Mean, she start every morning, 8 o'clock, between 8 and 10 o'clock in the morning, in the central uh, uh, site in Israel, Reshet Bet, and she puts on the map to Israel what we will talk today. She put the, the, the items that she wants, and she said, this what interested me today. And you know, after 8 o'clock in the morning, when she put that as, as, as a subject, so all day you will hear that in the, in the, in the news, in the evening day program, night programs, until tomorrow, and then she will put the next one. Two months ago, I remind you that we started the project a year ago. Two months ago, Thursday morning, we waked up in the morning, and she announced in her program, Boker Tov, Kerim Reibach, today we will start a new item, 9 to 9, summary of the week. I want in Thursday to have Sikum Shavua, summary of the week of 9 to 9. And then she got reactions from so many people who heard her, then Kfiyanati, why you brought the Tanakh to your Seder Yom? And then she reacted. She said, listen, she said it in the radio. said, I want all you, it's about a million people who listen to her in Israel. Very popular program. She said, I want all know, I'm the same Karen Neubach, the same Karen from yesterday. And I'm secular and I'm still secular, and the Bible is mine. And I have the privilege, because 9 to 9, to read the chapter first time in my life, to, to read chapters in the Bible. And I'm very proud to do that, and no one will stop me to do that. And since then, every Thursday, every Thursday, you can open Reshet Bet after 9 o'clock in the morning and listen to the summary of the week she interviews, she, she takes from the site always two people try to take the reform, the women if can, she can do it, you know, uh, together a rabbi reform women, it's better and she, she interviews her about the summary of the week about 12 minutes every Thursday morning this is a revolution. Yes, please. Uh, first question is, what is your opinion about the new developments at the Kotel? Someone slept when I spoke. <laughs> All right, the next one. Uh, what do you think about the future of divorce in Israel? Will there be civil divorce? And what do you think the best solution could be? Why they ask about divorce and not marriage? <laughs> The, the, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real one, it's a real question. It's a real question because we have, first of all, we should know, as a democracy, my, before 9 to 9, I worked in the IDI, the Israel Democracy Institute. And to keep Israel as a Jewish state with democracy states, it's a challenge. Because if we have more than 300,000 citizens in Israel, who identify themselves as a Jews, but they are calling the Orthodox Salachic, they are not. What are they supposed to do? Where are they supposed to go? To church? To the Islam? What they, how they need to be married? If according to the law, the only place to be married in Israel it in the rabbinate, if you are Jew, in the church, if you are Christian, in the mosque, if you are Islam. So what are they supposed to do? So minimum, 
For that 100,000 people, we need to find a solution. Let's start with that. Now, why we have so many people like that? This is a different question that you didn't ask about the Kiyu. You didn't ask, I will not answer. <laughs> but, but this is a serious situation. Now, because the same feeling between the Dati and Chiloni, when young people grew up in Israel in a secular society, I upset to say they feel so far from the rabbinate. They feel that they have nothing to do with that, with the rabbinate. And because of that, they said, I don't want to touch everything that connected to Rabbanut. You know, the house of so many young couples who said that we want to marry, but not via the Rabbanut. So what? We'll go to civil marriage. Well, in Kafrisi. Now the question is, if we will open this gate and we'll, see, we'll say loudly that it's an open market. You can make your own decision. If you want a Rabbanut, go to Rabbanut. If you want a civil marriage, go to civil marriage. And everyone will, will uh, declare where what, you're what supposed to go. It's a hard question because usually we said we need to keep the Rabbanut just because one reason. What is the reason? That we will, without that, we have no control about the coming generations. The truth is, that we have no control. <laughs> so, in my opinion, I should say, it's my own opinion, I believe that by opening the gate, we will collect much more Israelis to the tradition marriage. I believe that. Would you like to do a little bit more elaboration on your views regarding ethical kashrut, specifically uh, restaurants who decide they don't want to go through their banut and want to define kashrut for themselves or use private organizations? Again, we should uh, uh, cut this question to two pieces. First of all, the values of kashrut need to have something completely new. I will give you two examples uh, very fast. Story. Okay, story. Uh, ten years ago, you remember, it's almost eleven years ago, the disengagement, you all remember. We have many uh, Afghanot, uh, the demonstrations in Israel about the dis disengagement. And uh, one was a Shabbat. There are the demonstrations in Tel Aviv something about the disengagement, and I heard that in the same Tzai Shabbat in Tel Aviv, there are another small demonstration, not about the disengagement, but in the front of a restaurant who sell a liver from Avaz, goose, goose, right? A goose liver, it's called? Kaved Avaz. Now, if you know the system, this is a clear tsar ba'alei chayim. It's a terrible way to, to have this uh, delicatess product that deliver. It's a terrible way to do that. Today, according to the law in Israel, it's forbidden. But it, in, 10 years ago, it was it where they, they allowed to do that. And in my opinion, this is something that we, the Rabbanim, need to declare that it's forbidden, not because the, 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 you know, the, the organization who care about animals said that, because the Torah said that. Tzar Ba'alei Chaim. And you think about the history of Kashrut, we will not open that now, but you will learn about hundreds of years of Kashrut Halakha, from Hungary, from Poland, from, from Ukraine, from all East Europe, they did that, they were professional, the Jews were the professional to do that. 
And the question in the halacha was about trefot, nothing about Tzar Baalei Chaim. And it's unbelievable, you know that Tzar Baalei Chaim, to keep the animals, it's the oraita. This is an example that we, the rabbis in the modern time, we can lift the halacha to completely new place. We can lift the halacha to light, to see that we care, not, not just to show other people that we care, but the Torah, ah, mamash, care about that. We have many examples about kashrut and halacha. This is one aspect about the question. Other aspect is who allowed to bring teuda kashrut? This is a politician question, first of all, but we should say that you need to, to have a central place who have the, the, the uh, dargot kashrut, I would say levels, levels of kashrut. It's a very hard question. I specific think that we need to have a central place to give the document of Kashrut. I refuse to take part of the game that everyone who wants can all give his own document. I think that this is like a churban, it's destruction, the whole building of Kashrut. But the Kashrut should be very careful for one example is that you go to Emek Refaim Street, all, I believe, know the whole restaurant there. So, you have kashrut called Lemehadri. Mean what? Mean what kashrut? We all want to be Lemehadri, of course. So, mean what Lemehadri? Mean that we take the halakha in the, the higher level that we can. One of the example is that the mashgiach need to be in the kitchen all time that the kitchen is open. Not just come in and out, but keep himself in the restaurant all time, and better that the mashkiach will be a Jew, a religious Jew. Okay? Now, how much it will cost to keep a person like that in the kitchen all time? If you care about the place, not about the people who come to eat. But you care about the business in Jerusalem. You want that the people will stand alive, will work, and will have a, the, the option. If it's a small restaurant with two workers, and you add another one in the kitchen just to be mashgiach, no way, no one will do that. And then he will close, and then he will fall down. Do you care about him or you care just about the people who come to eat? This is a question. Ravavadi Yosef was the one who said, I will do two levels of kashrut. A regular to the business and the mehadan to the people who eat. Yes, okay. Uh, what is your message that you view the Jews of Chutzlar can do in our job and our role towards the things that you've discussed tonight? Concluding message. Wow. Conclusive message. Wow. I started with Libi Mizrach. I think the conclusive mes message is both sides. We need to learn better the needs of each other. I will tell you openly. The language makes a huge difference between us. I can say about rabbis. Everyone we are all, we are too lazy. Me, I can speak English like Israeli, as you can hear. I can understand you, kaha kaha. I will not read you, because it will take away me too long. And I will be ashamed to write something in English. This is two levels. And think about yourself in Hebrew, and you will see that it's exactly the same. You will understand my Hebrew kacha kacha. You will say a few words. You will not read and you will not write. And that means that we are mamash with huge gap between us. And we need to understand that this gap is against us. And we need to bridge that. We need to do actively things to learn 
how to listen, first of all, to listen to the needs from every side. I'm not allowed, as an Israeli, as an Israeli rabbi, I'm not allowed to say a word about the situation in LA between tribes, between sectors, between I don't know what, because we need to know I don't know. It's, it's important to say I'm, I know nothing about that, but I need to listen. And exactly the same the other side. We are two central places to the Jewish people. We believe, we all believe that Israel is the bracha that Hashem gave us in the last three generations after the Holocaust. We all believe that Israel is bracha. And we know that we need to keep Israel. We know that keep the Jewish life is important to all of us. But we should be more tsenua, modesty. Don't think that you know better than the other what they need to do. We need to listen carefully and other people need to listen carefully. And I will return back to the message from the Kedusha. Notnim reshut ze lazeh. Leakdish liyotzram benachat ruach. Toda rabah.